going to go ahead and take a look at more equations. So here we're dealing with absolute value. Whenever you're dealing with absolute value, you want to make sure you get the absolute value by itself. So if you're trying to solve something like this, you know you'd have to actually add 1, and then you'd have to get rid of the 2, so you divide both sides by 2, and you would get this. Well, we can do the same idea here. We want to get our absolute value, this stuff right here by itself. So you got to get rid of your 1. So you want to add your 1. Now you got to get rid of your 2, so you divide by 2. So now you got to think, OK, according to absolute value, if what's inside is positive, absolute value does nothing. And so then we have this. Or if what's inside is negative, then absolute value makes it positive by multiplying it by a negative 1. So if you have this, it could also be written like this here, where you take the negative the other side by dividing both sides by negative. Solve each one of these. Subtract your 2, subtract your 2, divide by your 5, divide by your 5. And so we get our two answers of negative 1 and of 1 fifth. Now, keep in mind, if you had absolute value equaling a negative number, there would really be no solution because you know anything you get out of the left side would be positive because absolute value never gives you a negative. The right side's a negative. Can a positive ever be equal to a negative? And the answer is no, so it's no solution. So you don't need to go ahead and do any work there. Well, here we want to continue to solve this one here. You're going to want to set it equal to zero, so you're going to take these two terms over then you're going to go ahead and try to factor it. First step in factoring is always to pull out your greatest common factor, which is an x squared. Take an x squared all of all your terms, and it leaves you the stuff in parentheses. Notice there's four terms. Whenever there's four terms, you want to try factoring by grouping. So you have your x squared in front. When you look here at the underlined in green, what can you pull out? Well, you could pull out a 5x squared. And so then that leaves you with this. Now you look at the underlined in black. What can you pull out of there? Well, you can pull out a negative 2. Pull a negative 2 out, and it leaves you with this. Now, when you're factoring by grouping, when your parentheses end up being the same, that means factoring by grouping is working. So now you're going to still have your x squared. You're going to take the yellow highlighted stuff, and you're going to pull that out. So you're going to pull out the yellow highlighted stuff like we did. When you pull that out, it disappears, so it leaves you only with a 5x squared there. That disappears because we pulled it out, and it leaves you with your minus 2. Well, you now have just three things multiplied together to give you 0. What's in front of the parentheses has to be 0. Your first parenthesis has to be 0. Or your last parenthesis has to be 0. Well, it's pretty easy to solve the first one. You take your square root of 0, you get 0. Here, you go ahead and solve this one by adding your 4 and dividing by 3. And so then you get your 4 thirds. Here, you'd have to try to solve this for x. So you want to get rid of the 2 by adding that to the other side. Get rid of your 5 by dividing. Now that you have your squared term by itself, you can undo the squaring by taking your square root square to the top or the square to the bottom. But remember, you don't want to leave a root in the bottom, so you'd have to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of the bottom. So then you're going to get a root 10 on top. Root 5 times root 5 is 5 on the bottom, so you get plus or minus a root 10 over 5. So now you have your four answers, 1, 2, your positive root, and your negative root. When you're solving equations where your variables underneath the root. You want to get your root by itself. So you got to take your x to the other side. So add an x to both sides. Then you just want to undo your root. To undo your root, you want to go ahead and square the left side. And if you square the left side, you'd have to square the right side. On the left side, your squaring undoes your root. On the right side, remember, you cannot apply your square to each one when there's a plus or minus inside. So you'd actually have to go ahead and multiply it by itself. So you'd have to FOIL that out. And when you take your x plus 3 times your x plus 3, you do get this. Now it's just a quadratic. So you set equal to 0. And in this case, it factors. You set each factor equal to 0. Now, 
it's easy to get extraneous roots whenever you square both sides. So what you really need to do is to go ahead and plug each one of these numbers into your original problem to see if you get the same thing on each side. So we're going to go ahead and take our negative 6, plug it here, and plug it in here. When we do that, do, does this left-hand side really simplify down to 3? And the answer is no, because you get the square root of 9, which is 3, plus 6 is 9. It's not your 3. So you're going to try your negative 1, plug it in up here for your exits. So now you get the square root of 4, which you know is 2, plus 1, which is 3, so yes, it does work. So of the two answers we got, only one of them works. So your answer is only x being negative 1. Here, this is quadratic because we have three terms, two with variables, one where the exponents double the other. So we can solve it using the quadratic formula, or we could factor it. So if it factored, not all things factor. In this case, this one doesn't factor, but you wouldn't know that unless you tried it. When you write it in the quadratic form, your a is your 3, your b is what's in front of your box of the first power, your c is what has no box. So you plug in your a of 3, your b of negative 5, and your c of 1. You'll notice then that it simplifies down to 5 plus or minus root 13 over 6. Well, that's what y squared is, and we're trying to solve it for y. So you'd really have to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. So we take the square root of the right side. Then you're going to want to apply your big root here to the top and the bottom. It leaves you with a root in the bottom. You know you don't like to leave roots in the bottom, so you're going to go ahead and apply or multiply the top and the bottom by root 6 to be able to eliminate that root in the bottom. Now the question is, how do we work out the top? Well, if we were taking just a 6 times our parentheses, you would just distribute that through. What you're really doing here is you're really just taking the inside and multiplying it by the inside there. You're just multiplying what's on the insides. Well, over here you took your 6 times your 5 and your 6 and you put it in front of your x. Same idea here. We're going to take our 6 times our 5. We're going to get our 30. We're going to take our 6 and put it in front of our root. And so that's how we get this here on top. Now, notice we did have our big square root that we'd still have to have over the whole thing. This one here is also quadratic because you have three terms, two with variables, and this exponent's double that one. So you could try to factor it or use a quadratic formula, but you can factor or solve it for what's in your box, which is your y to the 1, 6, using your quadratic formula. And it does simplify down to this. So you get really y to the 1, 6 equaling this, but you can actually add the top together and subtract the top. And so then you get a 2 over 4, or 1 half. Over here on this side, you get a y to the 1, 6, with adding the top, which gives you a 4 over 4, which is 1. Now, we're trying to get uh, just y to the first. So you got to think, OK, what do I have to raise both sides to to undo my 1 6 power? Well, you'd actually have to raise both sides to the 6 power, because when you have an exponent raised to an exponent, you multiply, and those multiply together to give you 1. And if you raise the left side, you got to raise the right side. So then you just get a 1. Same idea over here. Raise both sides to the 1 6 power. So you get a y on the left. Your 1 to the 6 is a 1. Your 2 to the 6 is 64. So these are your two answers. Once again here, you want to go ahead and get this exponent to be 1. So you have to raise both sides to the reciprocal of your exponent. So then the, you would just get this. Remember, cube root of negative 27 is negative 3 raised to the fifth power. And then you get negative 243. Same idea here. Raise both sides to the reciprocal power, which means you'd have to take your cube root of 27, and then you still have to square it, and so you get 9.